Hello world, welcome back to CyberCrete. I know that you all might have heard about the GPT-4O or the GPT-4 Omni, uh, which is basically launched by OpenAI and it have again taken the world by storm because it is much cheaper as compared to the GPT-4 that it was already there. So it is basically half the price of the GPT-4 and also it is going to be free for most of the user. So let's suppose you are going to be using the GPT-4 Omni. So it is going to be free, you will keep using it and once Many people started using GPT-4 Omni, uh, again it will go down for some time and once the user stops, again you can use GPT-4 Omni. So this is the basic general idea. And the best part of this model, first the cost is just a half of GPT-4, second it's multi-modular with the power of GPT-4s. So you will be able to use it uh, with the videos, with the images and with uh, voice and many more things like that. So you might have seen the demo and if you haven't, I request you and I urge you to basically go there and check what all features are new with the GPT-4 Omni. But in this particular video, we are going to be discussing all those different features and we are going to be doing with code. So you actually know how to actually create uh, it and also integrate it onto your ongoing application. So if you have some application, you want to basically use it, this video is going to be for you. So with that said, let's start this video. So very First thing uh, is that you have to have your open API key with you. So if you have uh, open API key, that's very good. You can just go there and save it in your .env file. And I'll be providing a requirement.txt file that you can basically use to install all those dependency. So the very first step of you will be to basically create a virtual environment of Python. So which you can do using Python dash m venb source uh, activate so this command is basically going to create a virtual environment as well as activate your environment so this is just the shortcut that i have basically used uh, but let me just clear it and just activate the environment so now i am in my environment and i have already installed the requirement.txt if you haven't you have to basically install it and once that is done and your env file dot env file uh, so you can basically create a env file and save your uh, open api key with this open api key variable then you are ready to go so the very first thing that we are going to test is how you can generally make use of it in a chat application because the price is low so if you are using any applications where the gpt4 model is required to be used in the uh, simple text chatting format then you can do this so here, uh, the very first step that I have done is to basically create a client. Uh, it is going to be basically the same. And yes, if you already have open API installed in your environment, you have to make sure that you update it. Unless you update it, you are not going to be getting the support for the GPT-4 Omni. So I have updated it. And if you are going to install the requirement.txt, it will install just the exact version. So here I am creating this. So here I am basically uh, create, uh, just naming the model that I'm going to be using. Here I have basically named the model as GPT-4O, which is the Omni, it's not zero, it's a small O. And here I have basically taken the open API key from my .env file. And here I am basically using the completion. So here I'm just saying, uh, here is the role of the system. You are basically a helpful coding assistant that is going to help in coding. And here I basically told, hello, could you provide the solution of to some problem? which you might remember if you are good in DSA or if you have ever practiced with DSA. So if I now run the code, python run main.py, then it is basically going to display the code for us. And if I have not provided the specific programming language, it can provide the solution in any language. So here uh, it chooses to use python because it is, ChatGPT is mainly focused on the python language and it performs exceptionally well with the python. That's my assumption, but uh, yours can be different. So here it have given the solution here. It have also given the explanation and also the GPT-4 Omni is way faster as compared to GPT-4. So speed is also one of the key point of this model. So this is quite basics and uh, you already would have been doing this with other models. Now let's do what's new. The very first thing is with the images. So now we have to basically use an image, encode it and then basically pass it to our model. So uh, here, uh, let me just clear this up. So here, what I'm going to be doing here, I have taken this particular image. So can you solve this? And it was written six divided by two uh, inside the bracket, it's one plus two. And the, according to the Bodamas rule, the answer should be nine here. So let's see if it is going to be able to solve this. So here I have written the function that is basically responsible for encoding our image into the base 64 format. And here, once the encoding is done, uh, we would have the image information in this particular variable. Now, just as we have did for the chat uh, completion, we have to basically do the same here. So here, uh, 
we are also uh, doing exactly same thing but here in the system role i'm saying you are a helpful assistant that respond to me in markdown just for easy uh, to visualize purpose and help me with this math homework and here uh, we have to basically provide the type text because the question will be in the format of text so here it's the text but here in the form of image url because this is the form of image url and you can directly just if you have the image url on the internet you can directly pass the image url here but if you have it in the local system which you will be doing if you are doing something uh, for the production level or something of your own project uh, you will basically do this so here i am basically providing the form of url uh, the base64 encoding of our image and i am setting the temperature to 00, 0 which means do not protect or do not provide any randomness and once that is done i am just again printing it so now let's uh, run this code so if i clear the screen run the code so here it have basically provided the complete breakdown so let's solve this and it is able to solve with the step by step so if you are able to display it on the web it will actually be more clearer so it have uh, divided the problem and actual answer is actually nine so yes this is able to do its work pretty well so and this is also this can also be achieved using gpt4 vision but now let's move to some more interesting thing that is now we are be going to be discussing about the video so let's do that so first let me simply uh, just comment these things so that it don't uh, get printed again and let's move ahead to your video so for this uh, purpose i am basically be going to be using the mkbsd video in which he criticizes or basically upsells or downsells the ipad so this is the video that i will be using uh, of the mkbsd all right i call this the price ladder so let's say you want to buy an ipad right apple so here if you uh, pay close attention uh, he's wearing a white shirt with uh, some trigonometrical logo and he's holding an ipad so here we are going to be using this particular video so for that uh, we have to basically import these libraries and all of these will be provided in the requirement.txt that you have to basically install and then we have to basically encode this uh, video file into the frames of images and uh, take the audio transcript of it so we are going to be passing the video in the uh, form of frames so here uh, we are basically pass a single image but in the case of video for every second we are going to be passing one single images each so each uh, f so if the video is one second uh, and uh, for one second we are taking just a one screenshot or one screen capture for 60 uh, uh, so for one minute video there will be 60 different images so that's the theory and again we are going to extract the audio convert it into the text and that is going how it is basically going to work so that is uh, the process so here i have basically written this function the process video we are we can basically pass the video path and frame per second how much frame do you actually want to capture per second so that we are going to basically be doing inside this particular function and saving them with the form of dot jpg and once that is done uh, we are also going to transcribe the audio out of it so we are going to pass the audio path which is nothing but uh, once we are passing the video we are going to extract the audio out of it so it will be video and then the extracted audio so uh, after that we are basically going to be using the gpt own whisper one to extract the audio out of it and then we can basically save both of these uh, into the our own variable so base 64 encoded frames and audio path because here in this particular function we are basically extracting the audio out of the video and then here's the transcription text so in the transcription text uh, we have uh, the audio recording in the form of text so this is that part so now pay close attention here we are going to be using the same particular function these lines are basically going to be remain same and again uh, the main trick is here role again here i have mentioned some very important point you are generating a video summary that's good it will generate the video summary of the mkbsd video create a summary of the provided video as its transcript because we have to basically say we are providing both the video and the audio in the form of transcript and also provide a detail about the dress and the color they are wearing so it is responsible now to basically point out or how the people is actually wearing and you can extract uh, or basically add much more information to the prompt and get much more specific uh, information out of it but that's up to you i'm just giving uh, the bare bone code that you can basically use into your application then i am basically saying these are the frames of the video and uh, i am basically passing the frames and here i am basically mapping it uh, so every frame will be mapped and again in the text because remember the audio is now converted into the text format and this is the transcribed text that we are going to be passing and uh, here again we are setting the temperature to the euro so that it does not provide any randomness so 
then we are basically uh, printing the content. So in this, what we did, we put an MKBSD video, uh, extracted the uh, video frames in the form of uh, image. So there are multiple images that are going to be sent to the GPT model. And again, the audio is basically converted into the form of transcription text that is again sent to the GPT. Now let's run the code. So here it basically have uh, created, it have extracted 55 frames uh, because I think it's a short video. So it's around one minute and uh, it have extracted audio in this particular audio file. And now this uh, 55 frames of images are going to be sent to the GPT server as well as this audio in the form of text. So the audio text is not a big deal, but these images are. So it is going to take some time at least. So here you see, uh, this is the response. The video discuss about the Apple pricing strategy of the iPad, blah, 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 and detail about the dress and the color. Here you see presenter outfit. Here it have extracted and here it is able to know there are two main thing in this particular video. The presenter outfit, the presenter is basically wearing the white shirt with the geometric uh, design uh, featuring black, gray, and red blocks. Uh, so let's see if it's the correct. Okay, black, red, uh, black, uh, okay, black, gray, and red blocks. I don't see the black, but I think uh, it's mixing the black and gray. And here the iPad, the iPad present in the yellow iPad uh, throughout the video. So again, the single uh, iPad that he is basically using is yellow in color. And if you see, uh, yes, uh, this is right. He is basically using a yellow iPad. So this was the gist of the latest release of the GPT-4 and how you can basically use it inside your own project and integrate it in your own application. So thanks for watching and I hope that this video have helped you and please make sure to like the video and subscribe to this channel and I will meet you in the next interesting video that is about the Google AI that has recently come.